Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. A princess at war, Queen Elizabeth II. World War II was certainly a trying time for everyone involved, but something that isn't often spoken about is how it affected the royal family, and more specifically, Princess Elizabeth, the future Queen of England. When war broke out, Elizabeth was just 13 years old, and like many children at the time, she and her sister Margaret were evacuated out of the city to avoid the dangers of the bombing raids. Elizabeth and Margaret were sent just 20 miles to Windsor Castle, and the two young girls were just a tiny number compared to the three million children in total who left their homes in the city for the safety of smaller towns in the countryside during the wartime with a further 2,600 children being evacuated to Australia, Canada, New Zealand, South Africa and the United States. It was on the 13th of October 1940 that Elizabeth, upon learning about the mass movement of people, gave her first address from the drawing room of Windsor Castle. This was part of the Children's Hour on the BBC that was an attempt to try and boost the morale of the public. Elizabeth went on to speak directly with the children who had been separated from their families as part of the evacuation scheme. Thousands of you in this country have had to leave your homes and be separated from your fathers and mothers. My sister, Margaret Rose, and I feel so much for you as we know from experience what it means to be away from those you love most of all. To you living in new surroundings, we send a message of true sympathy and at the same time we would like to thank the kind people who have welcomed you into their homes in the country. There was a varied response to Elizabeth's broadcast. Some felt she had done very well and that she was lovely and charming. But many also felt that the speech had been staged, and as such was just a piece of propaganda and a way to keep the population quiet. Elizabeth grew as the war did and went on to champion more aspects of the wartime life, and in turn, resilience. In 1943, Elizabeth appeared as part of the Dig for Victory campaign, as she was photographed tending to the allotments within Windsor. The campaign was labelled Dig for Victory, and it urged the people of Britain to use their gardens to grow food, and to also use every spare piece of land to do the same. This was to help combat the shortage of food that the country was experiencing, as before the war, Britain had relied heavily on food imports from across the world. With the increased threats from enemy submarines and warships, the imports stopped. As such, food was rationed, especially things like meat, butter, eggs, cheese and sugar. Then, on her 16th birthday, the future Queen of England undertook her first inspection of a military regiment during a parade at the castle. She had been given the role of honorary colonel of the Grenadier Guards. This was of huge significance as it symbolised her military involvement within the war effort. Then, when Elizabeth turned 18, she insisted on joining the women's branch of the British Army, the Auxiliary Territorial Service. You see, it was said that unmarried women under 30 had to join the armed forces to work on either the land or in the industry. And although Elizabeth was next in line to the throne, her father, King George, made sure that she was given no special treatment. She started off as a second subaltern in the, uh, in the ATS and was later promoted to junior commander, the equivalent of captain dubbed by the newspapers as the Princess Auto Mechanic, Elizabeth began her training as a mechanic in the March of 1945 and even undertook a driving and vehicle maintenance course at Aldershot. You see, during the war, there was a wide variety of jobs available to women in the ATS, including cooks, telephonists, postal workers, drivers, searchlight operators and ammunition inspectors. And although they were not allowed to fire guns, some women even served as part of the anti-aircraft units. Sadly, during the course of the war, due to the dangers posed, 335 women who served in the ATS died and many more were injured. 
By the June of 1945, there were around 200,000 members of the ATS from across the British Empire, serving on the home front and in many overseas areas of war. Now, although Elizabeth spent the majority of her days at her training facility, it was in fact close enough to Windsor Castle so that she could return home each evening instead of sleeping at the camp. The King and Queen and Princess Margaret visited Princess Elizabeth at the Mechanical Transport Training section in Camberley, in Surrey, and watched her learn about engine maintenance. When describing the visit to Life magazine, the Princess commented, I never knew there was quite so much advanced preparation for a royal visit, but I'll know another time. On the 8th of May 1945, the war in Europe ended and thousands took to the streets to celebrate. The streets were flooded from Trafalgar Square all the way up the mall leading to Buckingham Palace, where the King and Queen greeted people from their balcony. Elizabeth, dressed in her uniform, accompanied by her sister, slipped into the crowd to enjoy the festivities. It was in 1985 when Elizabeth, now Queen, spoke about that evening on BBC and said how she tried to avoid being spotted. I remember we were terrified of being recognised, so I pulled my uniform cap well down over my eyes. Lines of unknown people linking arms and walking down Whitehall, and all of us were swept along by tides of happiness and relief. There are even reports that the princess joined a conga dance through the Ritz as they celebrated with the crowds. I think it was one of the most memorable nights of my life, she recalled. Today, Queen Elizabeth II is the Colonel-in-Chief of 16 British Army regiments and corps, as well as many different Commonwealth units. She was the very first female member of the Royal Family to be an active duty member of the British Armed Forces and she is also the last surviving head of state to have served during the Second World War. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.